Hey everybody, welcome to Universal Man, where we turn your flight into fight so that you can master yourself and conquer your goals. My name is Mark Weppet, and I am here to help you sharpen your masculine edge so that you can cut through the resistance that's holding you back from living on the front lines of life and being a man that you admire. And in today's episode of the Sexual Self Mastery Series, what we're going to be looking at is how to get past a certain number of days in your rebooting streak. You see, a lot of guys, they struggle to reach one day, five days, a week, two weeks, a few months. And the strategies for reaching that next level, it, they're usually different. You know, there are some things that you really need at the beginning, and there are some things that you'll need no, more toward the end. And there are some things that, you know, really only come into play in a big way after, you know, you get 90 days clean or more. So that's what I want to be breaking down today, kind of give you the ability to triage your own reboot and figure out what is what it is that you might be missing and what you might be what you might need in order to get the kind of life that you want. Most guys struggle to quit porn because they aren't building the right habits to replace porn. If you want to learn the simple habit replacement system I've used to help thousands of men quit porn and develop self-mastery, then click the link in the description below and download my free Reboot Regimen Guide. So before I really start diving into this, I want to just make it clear that these are not absolute hard and fast rules, all right? Everybody re everybody's reboot's gonna look differently. Everybody's gonna need different things at different points. Um, this is just kind of general sort of stuff that I've seen in my years of work in this field. And so, you know, maybe something that I say is necessary for someone on day 90 might be necessary for you on day one. I don't know, but you know, this should give you a general idea of what to focus on and when. So let's start at the very beginning. How can you get one day clean? Well, you know, believe it or not, I get this from time to time. I get people who say, you know what, I can't even go a day without porn. You know, maybe they, they had in the past, but they've fallen into a pattern where they just can't seem to get out of a rut where they're using it every single day. And it's pretty much the same question that I ask people uh, when they, they share this with me. I, is I ask them on a scale of one to 10, how hard are you trying? And no one has ever told me that uh, they're trying 10 out of 10 and they can't get past one day. So if you wanna get past one day, and probably the first couple of days, uh, you gotta try, okay? You gotta be seriously giving it some effort. And if you're not, well then obviously it's not going to happen, right? So first step, step is to try. Okay, so say you start trying and you start being able to snag the uh, a clean day here and there, but you're having trouble stringing multiple of those days together. You know, you, you struggle to get even three or five days under your belt. Well. What you're going to want to focus on at that point is your why. Do you know why you are doing this? And do you think about it? You know, do you have a clear vision of what you're trying to accomplish here? Or is there basically just some kind of vague sort of uh, impression that you should do this? I've noticed that for a lot of people, if they get clear on their why, that's enough to at least give them some kind of clarity to get a few days. If you, if you have a why and you're trying, you're probably going to be able to get a few days. And if you're struggling to articulate what your why is, well, go check out the first few videos of this series. Go check out um, you know, some of the stuff around the brain science of quitting porn or check out some of the reboot accounts of people who have gone through this process and uh, their life got so much better. A lot of that can give you a, uh, the material you need to formulate your why and start stringing some consecutive days together. So after you can get a few days back to back, the next step then is you want to try and get that first week under your belt, right? And a lot of people struggle with this because usually one week, that's sort of like the the one of the core cycles in their life. You know, you usually have the work week and then you have the weekend. And that covers a big range of activities, of brain states, of, you know, emotional ups and downs. And in order to get to this point, I think the big thing you need to focus on and you need to start developing is habit replacement. You see, with quitting porn, it's not something that you can just cut out. Your brain's not super good at just avoiding things because as soon as you focus on not doing something, you're also kind of focusing on it. So it's like, you know, if I tell you to not think about a pink elephant, what do you do? You think about a pink elephant. So you can't just not watch porn because that's just going to, you know, keep porn on your brain, which in turn is going to trigger you and, you know, not help you out. So the key is to focus on other things and you need to know what those other things are. So there's a few categories uh, that you might want to consider when talking about habit replacement. All right. So on one level, uh, you just got basic pattern interrupts. 
So uh, I call these barriers to relapse. So like, you know, if you tend to relapse when you come home from work, well, then you got to have a plan for what you're going to do instead when you come home from work. If you don't know what you should be doing, well, it's going to be very difficult to just not watch porn. Okay, you have to have something else to occupy your mind and your body with, right? Um, so developing things like that, maybe like, you know, check out my technology usage guide. That's got some good stuff. Uh, you know, a number of the videos in this series talk about things that you can do instead of porn. Start constructing these habit replacements, you know, and when you're really triggered, make sure you've got some kind of go-to activity that you can engage in, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's uh, writing on a forum or, or something like that, like the uh, support forum. You have to know your your if thens, meaning if this happens, then I do this. And so, you know, around quitting porn, it's like if I get triggered, then I will do what? You got to know what that what it is. And you want to be careful that you're not doing stuff that's like super hard. It's like if I get triggered, I'm going to do handstand push-ups. It's like no, that's probably a little too hard. Pick something easier. Pick something softer. Yeah, go ahead and do the handstand push-ups when you feel like it. But when you're super triggered, you probably don't feel like it. So make sure you got other options. And if you start engaging in success, in you know clear habit replacements, well you're probably going to be able to, to get a week under your belt. So after people start being able to get one week, the next thing they tend to get uh, stuck on is reaching two weeks. And it's, I think in part, this is because after one week without uh, orgasming, if you're going hard mode, which is what I recommend, meaning total abstinence for at least the period of 90 days of reboot, um, people, they struggle because I think there's a hormonal shift that starts to occur. Um, you know, they, they talk about this transient testosterone spike that happens around seven days after orgasm. And I think other stuff starts to happen too. I think there are some brain changes that start to occur. The chain, the cravings kind of change in intensity. Uh, often they get a little bit more intense, not always, but often they do. And at this point, you got to start creating um, some deeper changes, not just the surface level habit shifts. This is where I think if you want to get past two weeks, you got to start engaging in lifestyle shifts because think about it, like using porn is a way to cope with all kinds of pain in your life. OK, it can be uh, it can help you run away from a lack of progress in your career, it can help you uh avoid those feelings of loneliness because you don't have meaningful relationships uh, or intimate relationships as you might want. Uh, it can prevent you from feeling the pain about your own lack of discipline and lack of physical fitness and all this kind of stuff, right? And so if you really want to start leaving porn behind, well, you're going to have to start actually addressing those pains that you're running from with porn in a real way. And so to get past two weeks, you got to start doing that, right? And you can't take it on all at once. You can't, you know, take your career to the next level, get in shape, quit porn, um, start meditating, uh, you know, get out on the dating scene. It's going to be way too much to take on all at once. So you got to make sure you have some phases constructed. And I've talked about this previously, but, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you know what your focus, your lifestyle changes are going to be for this period in your life where you're focusing on reboot. Um, in my, uh, reboot regimen guide that you can get for free on my website, I talk about breaking into three phases. All right. So you got your foundation phase where you're focusing on quitting porn and getting your baseline disciplines up to par. Like, you know, your, your general diet, general like energy management techniques like sleep and uh, making sure you're, you're having downtime. Um, making sure you're also being pr generally productive in your core responsibilities, this kind of stuff. Focus on the, the basics first and then quit porn. And as you do that, then you're going to have this powerful foundation and then start moving to the next phase, like second phase where you're you know maybe taking on bigger goals. And uh, eventually you're going to be progressed all the way up to the point where you can really aim for that high level stuff that's really pushing you to your limits, but you're going to have the foundation to back you up in it. So you want to get past two weeks, you really got to start engaging in a lifestyle shift. All right. So now this next period, I kind of break it up into like the three to six week period because it's all kind of similar in there from what I've seen. And this actually, I think, tends to be the most difficult period. If you want to get past two weeks, well past two weeks, well, I think this is where you're going to face the big stuff. Um, for most people, this is where the hardest points in their reboot will occur. 
And because of this, you got to go deeper again. And this is where I think self-talk really becomes essential. You need to know how to respond to yourself when you're triggered, you're craving, you got all these rationalizations running through your head, you haven't gotten off in, you know, weeks, and you just haven't usually been here, right? And all, uh, along with this, usually that stuff that you've been using porn to repress, a lot of that starts bubbling to the surface. So it's like, yeah, so maybe um, you use porn to escape your, your feelings of loneliness or inadequacy or whatever. And, you know, you're making some lifestyle sh shifts and you're trying to improve, but you're not where you want to be yet. And so you actually have to confront those feelings. You know, you're, you're doing your best, taking your actions, or maybe you've decided that really addressing that thing is going to be further in the future. But what are you going to do now? If you can't run away to porn, you have to respond to those feelings in the moment. And in order to do this, you need to have strong self-talk. You need to know how to point out the truth. You need to know how to point out the lies. You need to know how to separate, you know, your worth from your conditional status in any of these things. And I talk about this in, you know, my, my other videos. But uh, this is where the self-talk stuff really starts to become essential. And you got to be willing to talk yourself through this process of sacrificing the short-term pleasure to achieve long-term fulfillment. And if you can't talk to yourself, if you can't create this internal dialogue where you can uh, interface with your emotions and work with them rationally, then you're not going to make it past this point. You know, you have to learn how to tell yourself the truth in the moments that you're triggered. After the three to six week period, usually, you know, you, you'll still get triggered, but often the intensity and frequency of those trigger clusters or whatever starts to, to decrease. And if someone relapses from like day 72 to 90, usually why this happens is because they lose focus. They pretty much will get complacent. You know, maybe they're like, ah, you know, I haven't, I've been doing really good. I got, you know, super far in the streak. It feels like I'm, I'm pretty confident here. And they just kind of stop paying attention. You know, they stop reminding themselves what they're doing and they give themselves permission to do things that, you know, earlier in their reboot they wouldn't have, right? So it's kind of just a sense of overconfidence is what I see uh, tends to bring downfall at this point. Um, and so it's pretty easy to mitigate this. Uh, I think the easiest way is to be a part of a community and to just continue to check in, um, to maybe continue to track your streak, remind yourself what you're doing and remind yourself that you're not out of the woods yet. Um, like one of the things I like to see in my clients who have good streaks going is one, you know, they feel good about their good streak, you know, like, hey, you know, this is awesome. I'm moving in the direction I want. But they also have an, an appropriate level of hesitancy. They're not completely celebrating yet. They recognize that urges can still come up, that they could still slip, that they could still fall if they don't properly handle things. And if something comes along and you're not in this state of kind of being on your game because you just forgot what you're up to, well, you know, you can very easily relapse. So if you do these things and you, you kind of get it all down, I'm very confident that you'll be able to hit 90 days clean, okay? And just because you hit 90 days, 90 is not some magical number, but there usually are some changes that occur. At this point, if you relapse, it's because you choose to. It's not because of some sort of compulsive autopilot thing. It's because you give yourself permission to relapse and you decide, at least in that moment, that it's a good idea. And so the reason that this happens, and it absolutely does, I've, I've heard from many guys who have had, you know, long periods of abstinence and then they relapse. And there's usually a couple of reasons as to why this happens. Okay, so one big one is that they don't pursue meaningful status, meaning like they don't try to continue their path of growth. Like for a lot of guys, not all, but but a lot of guys like quitting porn is like their first serious personal development challenge where they're really engaging in a lot of growth. And it's great because I think as humans, we're designed to grow. We're designed to constantly evolve and learn and improve. And it feels good for them to be doing that, even if it's really hard. But then after they reach their 90 days, they don't set appropriate new goals. And so they just kind of start to stagnate. Or, you know, maybe they 
do the stuff that's necessary to get them away from porn, but then they don't actually do the things that will allow them to plug into their life. They don't take the the risks or the steps or uh, the do the work to keep them engaged, keep them feeling like their life is something worth living and being a part of and being totally present in. And so, you know, at that point, porn starts to sound like a good idea. It's like, all right, if I'm not getting status or meaning or anything in my real life, might as well, you know, check out this porn stuff again. I can, I can probably peek at it. You know, I can, I can look there. It's like, I'm not going to fall back into it. And then, you know, that's, that's pretty much what happens. So that's one piece that uh, if you want to continue past 90 days. And then the other piece is, uh, you know, being resilient in the face of significant hardship. So this is a big one is when some kind of unusual hardship uh, occurs in your life. Maybe you lose your job. Maybe you get into a terrible fight with your significant other. Maybe there's a death in the family. Um, Something like, like, you know, these kind of big sort of catastrophe sort of things. If you don't have, uh, if you don't choose to respond in a resilient way, in a way that can uh, really, really what it is, is like if you don't choose to actually care for yourself in these moments, then you're going to rely on porn. It's like if you don't choose to adopt a way of managing these problems in a way that truly serves you, then you're going to just default to what your emotional mind remembers as the way that you handle these sort of problems. And that's going to be porn. So like past 90 days, you can kind of summarize it as like the heart of it is an identity shift. And I've talked about in my videos about identity that how important this is. It's like you have to become someone that no matter what kind of hardship comes your way, you don't watch porn. You don't rely on the lie uh, that porn offers. You just got to internalize that and you got to hold that. And so it's like if you're not that kind of guy, then what kind of guy are you? What kind of guy are you in the face of hardship? What kind of guy are you in the face of setback? What kind of guy are you when you really screw up? (laughs) Right? Because this is a big thing that happens. Like if a guy screws something up on, you know, maybe he messes up. Maybe he makes a big mistake. If he devalues himself, he says, I'm not worth the effort, then you know, he's just going to grasp at pleasure and he's not going to feel like he's worth <laughs> worth being present in his own life for. So past 90 days, it's all that, that belief system stuff. Are you willing to honor yourself? Are you willing to continue to pursue goodness? And if you put all this stuff together, then yeah, you can live a porn for your life. Absolutely. Uh, are you going to have to become somewhat exceptional in terms of the average person? Yeah, you are. And that's kind of the crazy thing. And part of why I think p- quitting porn and this whole process is so cool because it's it's literally the rite of passage for the modern man. And, and it elevates him to the next level in his masculinity because it forces so much change. Uh, but it's such good change that it forces. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Hopefully you found this insightful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, yeah, stay sharp. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, if you found this episode useful and you want to hear more, make sure you like, subscribe, and if you're tuning in on YouTube, make sure you hit that bell button to turn on notifications. But if you really like this content and you would like to join the tribe of Universal Men, then you need to head on over to the Universal Man Patreon page by clicking the link in the description. We call ourselves the Vanguard because we are committed to living on the front lines of life. By joining, you'll gain access to exclusive content, weekly accountability, community chat rooms, and live calls. Also, by joining the Vanguard, you become a part of my inner circle. Therefore, you get my prioritized attention. Most importantly, though, you'll be joining a crew of like-minded guys that can help support and inspire you on your journey of masculine self-mastery. So click the link below and sign up today.